10 and 1 against Michigan in his tenure at Ohio State, largely the reason he's not the Buckeye coach anymore. Jim Tressel knew early how important the Michigan game was. I can assure you that you'll be proud of our young people in the classroom, in the community, and most especially in 310 days in Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the football field. Some of the players said they got tired of hearing about Michigan. Jonathan Wells wanted them to hear about him a little bit. On a fourth and one, Wells takes it to the house, 46 yards out, it's 14 to nothing. Check the replay, Mark. And Jamar Martin does an outstanding job, the fullback, of blocking, opening the hole for Jonathan Wells on this play. Later in the second quarter, still 14-0. Navarre, who's been struggling under 50% in his last four games, picked off Tim Anderson making the interception. Here's Wells again, 11 yards, and he has three touchdowns. It's OSU, 21-0. He went for a buck 22 in the three touches in the first half. Late in the second quarter, Jermaine Gonzalez trying to spark the Michigan offense. Miscommunication on the snap winds up in a safety, 23 to nothing at halftime, but Michigan would come back. Oh, the third quarter, the old demons started to come up for the Buckeyes, thinking, can we beat this team? Marquise Walker with a touchdown to cut it to 23 to 7. He became the all-time receiving leader at Michigan. But everything was not perfect. Marquise Walker oh, hit him in a bad place. Right on the floor, and he punches it out, and it was even more costly when the note from Epstein's mother was not accepted. Hayden Epstein misses the 27-yard field goal, still 23-7. Andy Groom trying to punt, block, not sound in the kicking game. game. Thank you. Anthony Jordan making the play. In the ensuing possession, B.J. Askew would score 23-13. The two-pointer failed, and here is the key play. Down by 10 points with the bar in the pocket, throws the ball to the right for Walker. It's picked off by Mike Doss, just down by 10 with a little less than 10 minutes to go in the game. This was a chance for them to get closer in this football game, but Navarre's picked off. 17 points on turnovers, five of the Michigan turnovers, four interceptions by Navarre in the day. And Navarre's thrown 10 picks in his last five games, but still, he tried to rally the Wolverines in the big house. This time, Walker hangs on. Second touchdown is just a six-point game. Ohio State recovered the onside kick, but Michigan, one last chance. Navarre heaving it up. The way it's been for John lately, picked off by Dustin Fox, and there was much rejoicing. Ohio State winning for the first time in Ann Arbor since 1987, which was Earl Bruce's last game at Ohio State, 26 to 20, the final. And with this final score, it means that Illinois is now your undisputed Big Ten champion. They will get the BCS bid. While meanwhile, Jim Tressel just happy to celebrate a victory. He is one and zero against Michigan. We didn't promise any wins. We promised that you'd be proud of us. And I think whether we won this game or not, the way our kids played, you would have been uh, proud of the way they did. Uh, but it's even sweeter when you come away with that victory. Uh, we were playing in a game for the Big Ten championship. And uh, anytime you lose to anybody. But, uh, you know, in this game, of course, it's, uh, you know, I mean, Ohio State, Michigan. If you had a set at the start of the year that we'd be, we'd be playing in the beat one of the BCS balls, there were a lot of people would have laughed, but I'm not sure. I don't think our players would have. And, uh, you know, these guys really believe in, in what we're doing and believe in where we're going, and that's where we're working. Any of those 13 of 26 wins on fourth quarter victories, and any of them were 40 points down. Washington and Miami, Cody Pickett, picked by Jonathan Velma, set up the Canes in good field position. It's not a good pass. Uh, no, not at all. Young quarterback on the road. Last year it was Dorsey. This year it's Pickett. He makes a bad throw. That hurts him. A couple of plays later, Clinton Portis right up the middle, 7 nothing Canes, and it was over about right then, Reese. Yeah, it didn't take much longer after that. Washington did drive down and shoot a field goal, and Clinton Portis ends up making him pay. Terrific vision here. Goes 30 yards for the touchdown. It is 14 to nothing now. It jumped ahead to 21 to nothing when, well, things just go from bad to worse for Neuheisel's crew. And Hunter gets tackled in the end zone. Safety is 23 to nothing, but that was the same score in the Ohio State Michigan game, but there would be no comeback. Ken Dorsey. Ken Dorsey was upset with Washington with some what he called cheap shots last year. Finds Najee Davenport for the score. It's 30 to nothing. And here's Jerome McDougal 
It's defensive lineman's dream, big fella. Look at the big fella. Sweet feet get to the end zone. This is what dive. Yes, the plunge. He's in for the score. 37 nothing. It's 44 to seven. About this time, New Heisel's looking for the bus and wondering why he traveled 3,000 miles for this. Dorsey to Andre Johnson for the touchdown. It's 51 to seven. And wow. Yeah. They did hang the Huskies, no doubt about it. 65 to 7 over the 12th ranked team in the land. Is it my imagination or did Boston College perhaps get Miami's attention a couple of weeks ago? I think they absolutely did. And now you start looking at what we have in this situation, and the BCS is just really kind of bizarre. Their last two, that would include a win in the swamp. And of course, would have to include a win over Vanderbilt. You saw the ball walk. There's more ball walking, this time crossing to Kelly Washington. The end zone, two-point conversion made it 14-0. Kickoff, Ronald Hatcher back to receive, and Derek Kensley, the talented young bat with a huge hit, and then it's, it's all about, well, it wasn't all about Dante Stallworth, but a lot of it was. It might as well have been about Dante Stallworth, ankle taped, and every week he gets something done. He writes three names of people who analyzes on them, and today, how about this? Randy Moss, Ike Hilliard, Jerry Rice, and he looked like Jerry Rice on that score. Very much so, and... See Clawson working again here, and here's Dante. Again, is this is this more Rice or is this Moss? Uh, looks more like Rice to me. What do you think? Rice? I think it's Moss. <laughs> Four catches, a buck 28. Tennessee rolls 38 to nothing. That sets up the showdown with Florida next week in the Swamp, and it's going to be a great Saturday of college football. Volunteers going in nine and one. They must find a way to beat the Gators. At that trophy, both teams trying to become bowl eligible. Penn State would need this win and one more. Michigan State needs one more either here against Missouri. Jeff Smoker coming off an injury, finding Charles Rogers, 59-yard touchdown. The flag against Penn State picked it up. It's a 10-7 game. Spartan still by three, and here's D.J. Duckett. Yeah, he's a big, strong running back, 16 yards there, pounding his way straight through the season. He's second straight season over 1,000 yards. Damon Dowdell would score. Zach Mills was warming up. Matt Seneca really didn't get it done much. And Michigan State was leading 24-7. And Mills to Bryant Johnson. And then it's a 31-21 game. And Mills to R.J. Luke. And suddenly Mills has energized that offense again. 64 yards. 31-28 to the Spartans lead. And now it's all gone. It's 35-31. Mills keeping it over the top for a one-yard touchdown. And Penn State. I, Zach Mills, led Penn State to five touchdowns and six drives, and 42 to 37. They go into East Lansing. They take the Land Grant Trophy, and they got a chance to become bowl eligible if they beat Virginia on ESPN next week. And it was a great comeback. They were way behind in this ball game before turning it on. Michigan State giving the game back, and Penn State doing a nice job of not quitting in this ball game. SEC ACC battle in the Peach State, Georgia and Georgia Tech. Book of Virtues on field goals by Billy Bennett. 37 yards out, that breaks the school record for field goals in a game. Look at that, he was six for six on the night. Hit from all over the place, it's 15-10, and did you see what he did? Baron Haynes, Haynes, Haynes. And four yards out, two-point try was no good. 21-17, dogs on top. They lost three in a row to the Jackets, and it's pick six by Tim Wansley. Ninth career interception, third for a TD, and Mark Rick. Oh, no elusiveness whatsoever as the dogs snap that losing streak to Tech 31-17. It's been a terrible season for the Jacks. Oh, just an awful season. They had high expectations, knocking off Florida State, which had four losses this season. The Yellow Jackets lost every meaningful game that they had down the stretch. They didn't get it done at all this season. They have to take on Florida State next week, and the game really doesn't mean a lot, frankly. Backyard brawl, Pitt in West Virginia. West Virginia's second drive of the game, Brad Lewis is going to be sandwiched rough in the brawl, isn't it, Mark? Oh, it's a nasty game in the brawl. But on the next play, Rashid Marshall, the redshirt freshman from Pittsburgh, from Pittsburgh for West Virginia, comes in for Lewis and runs for the 44-yard touchdown gallop. He was in there because Lewis suffered a broken collarbone and was out for the game, obviously. It's 10-7. Antonio Bryant made a, made a rare appearance this season. Had an outstanding game. And for Antonio Bryant, he had to come up with big catches. And here's a deep catch. And he loses his shoe but still comes down and dots his feet at the end of the end zone. Here's another look. There's the shoe. Rob. He's just a city slicker, you know. City That's slicker. right. Against those mountain boys. <laughs> one sock equals one knee or two feet or something like that. Pittsburgh takes the lead. 17-14. Bryant had a terrific day. It's a 20-17 game here. David Priestley firing into the middle of the field. Look at that little move Bryant makes. 11 catches, 186 yards. That would set up a Pittsburgh field goal. And Walt Harris 
Walt Harris, that's what I'm talking about. Look at Walt with a chest bump. Whoa. Oh, a lot of hugging going on. Male bonding, men not afraid to show their emotions after the backyard brawl. 23 to 17. Pittsburgh gets to win. Pittsburgh needs to beat UAB in order to become bowl eligible and to fulfill the Big East quota of bowls. For the Axe. Wisconsin, Minnesota. 111th time these two have met. Longest series rivalry in college football in 1A. Second quarter tied at 14. Minnesota on the Badgers 39. Asad Abdul Khalid finds Ben Utek and the Gophers up by a touchdown. Later in the second, same score. Brooks Bollinger to Anthony Davis. Another thousand yard rusher this season. And Anthony Davis is a sprinter and he's gone, right? He seems to think that he's logged on and is. Oh, no, he's not. Oh! Mike Leanne pops the ball out. It clearly should have been a touchback. Once again, Glenn Mason, no home calls in the Metrodome. They called it a touchdown. TD stands, tied at 21. Still in the second, Tellus Redmond. This guy hasn't gotten a lot of pub. He is dangerous. 60-yard run. Tries to make a little move here, so he no, keeps keep running. Keep running, keep running. Lower your back. shoulder. Oh. That's, no okay. That's okay. They got the touchdown anyway, and the lead at 28-21. Tellus Redmond breaks 1,000 yards. First back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing season for Minnesota. Since the 87-88 season. Here's Nick Davis. We've seen him do this in the past, not as much this year. No, he's had a little problem, a few injuries this time. Nick Davis looks like he's logged down, but I don't think he's gonna get there. There's that guy again running him down from behind. Mike Lehan. 66 yards, though it did set up a touchdown. It's a 31-28 game when Ron Johnson, I believe he'll play on Sunday's mark. And he steps out of bounds, but it doesn't matter. He still gets a touchdown call, but he will be playing in the NFL. We'll take another look at this. An outstanding job of catching the ball. Turns to the right. Watch the right foot. Right there. Left foot. Guys, He's Ron, out. This was not a great day. He's a wizard. He's a wizard. The <laughs> officials were muggles. Ron Johnson is a wizard and a wizard with an ax. He grabbed that thing. It's in good hands if he has it, you'd have to say. 42 to 31. Minnesota takes home the axe. Neither team is bowl eligible. The old oaken bucket for the 104th time. They could use the bucket to fill it up with rain. And uh, somebody said something about somebody's mama early in the game. There's 16 seconds in there. A little skirmish. I'd say these two just plain don't like it. Don't like it. The leading rusher in the Big Ten is Levron Williams. And Levron Williams is a guy that we probably haven't appreciated enough. He's had a great season. Yeah, he makes the all underappreciated team, but he's appreciated by his team here. 52 yards for the score puts them up seven to nothing. But a guy who is not underappreciated, Antoine Randall L. Look at him. The most exciting player in college football goes in to make it 13-0 Indiana. They miss the PAT. In the third quarter, Jeremy Johnson. Puts it on the wet turf, squirts out of there. Purdue recovers, and the turnover would lead to Kyle Orton, the freshman quarterback trying to jumpstart the sluggish Purdue offense. John Standerford and Purdue never lost a bucket under Tiller back in it, but on a fourth and goal play, Montrell Lowe is snuffed out. The maligned Hoosier defense rising up, and Cam Cameron takes the Oaken bucket. First time Indiana's won it since 1996. 13 to seven, the final, the seven points by Purdue, the lowest point total ever in the Joe Tiller era. The Cyhawk Trophy. Iowa and Iowa State, both teams were already bowl eligible for this thing. And 17-14, the Cyclones at home, another nice, I like to say, around here. Syracuse Orangeman rolling. He's going to mess up his peel that way. Kyle Johnson fighting his way in for the first touchdown. 7-0 game, but Syracuse D would have to deal with the nation's leading rusher, William Green. Is it William or is it... Uh... It's Will or William. It's just not Willie. Oh, but he can play. Watch him here. He bounces off a few tacklers, breaks another tackle on his way to a 40-yard sprint. Nice to have him back in the lineup after his suspension a couple of weeks ago. And here comes Green again, ripping through traffic, using that stiff arm. He's got a pretty good stiff arm on him. Green had a huge day, 16 carries, buck 82, couple of touchdowns late in the second quarter. BC ball, Syracuse 21-14. Keep an eye on Dwight Green here, Mark. Yes, he gets around the tackle and causes quarterback Brian St. Pierre to fumble. Freeney had a couple of tackles, a sack this after being totally shut down by Bryant McKenney of Miami last week. Freeney back to his customary disruptive self on the next play. R.J. Anderson after Freeney caused the turnover, takes care of it, finding Kyle Johnson who finds his way to the end zone again. Syracuse up 28-14 and R.J. starting to throw that thing around, adding a little bit more to this game. Little option, James Mungro not wishing to be upstaged by William Green. Tough run by Mungro quite make it in, but he would not be denied. Might as well give it to the guy who did some work, Mungro. 
He had a huge game as well. 34 carries, 184. A couple of more than William. A couple of touchdowns. And his team wins the game. That's Mongo, nice. not Muggle. Mo he's not a Muggle. He's a wizard. wizard. 39 to 28. Syracuse wins it. They finish 9 and 3. And they're going to go to a nice bowl. Nice turnaround by Pasqualona. Pasqualoni also to his friends. Notre Dame and Stanford. Tyrone Willingham. Been trying to seal its bowl spot. It's not already sealed. Carlisle Holiday. Omar Jenkins. He's gone on the farm. The Irish went out to be bowl eligible, and they have a 7 3 lead over Stanford. Randy Fasani was back in there for missing some games with injury. Casey Moore getting in to score in the fourth quarter is now 13 10. Same score, Stanford's next drive. Cardinal trying to save itself. Fasani showing no effect from that knee injury. Scrambles for the first down, and then Fasani looks for the tall receiver. That would be Teo Johnson, the basketball player. Look at him here. Pass interference down there, but Teo making the play. Stanford comes right back. Watch Kenneth Tolan gets in on the outside there. Stanford goes ahead 17-13 with time running out. So now the Irish must try to rally on the arm of Matt Levecchio. They consider him a little bit better pocket passer than Holiday, so he's in there. A little pump fake, and Tank's got it. And that'll do it. And the Irish fall, and the Irish not going to a bowl. They lose their sixth, second time in three seasons that's happened, 17-13. The final in this game is Stanford will finish up with their nemesis, San Jose State. Res ipsa loquita, uh, the thing speaks for itself for Notre Dame. As far as the Notre Dame issues, and they certainly have them, they finish up with Purdue as well. Well, one of the big traditional rivalries in college football, Southern and Grambling, the Bayou Classic. Doug Williams, the Grambling State Tiger coach, first quarter. He's, he's got himself a nice little quarterback, Randy Himes, out of the shotgun. He's going to take off and go 61 yards. Outstanding blocking down the field to play, and look at him stretch it out at the end to get the ball into the end zone. Later in the first is 13-0 Grambling State, and Himes, well... Not many guys can do this. Look at this throw. Yeah, it throws it off the wrong foot, which is a very athletic move there. Drops just a perfect touchdown pass in there. Perfectly done. Nice catch and run. Ellis Spears, a 62-yard score. So Himes, he's not quite finished. He's got another guy. They held up signs for him in the stands at the Superdome. Levi Washington. What a grab. Oh, what a throw. Oh, my goodness. What a play. 27 to nothing. Grambling had the lead. And, of course, the halftime show rivals the game. Sweet little moves right there. Grambling had to hang on. Southern had beaten them eight straight years in quite a rivalry type game. 30 to 20. Grambling State will now advance to Birmingham. Won two of them. You see Byron Leftwich putting up Heisman like numbers warming up. PJ Mays cares nothing about that. 46 yard run. It would lead to a 10 yard touchdown run by Mr. Mays. Second quarter. Penguins up 14 to 10. Leftwich trying to answer. Finds Curtis Jones. 20 yard touchdown. And Leftwich. The score tied at 24. He goes to Josh Davis. Yeah, you knew sooner or later he'd get it warmed up here. He does here to Davis. 31-24 Marshall. Left with three touchdown passes on the day. 31-24 game. Youngstown State trying to come back. And Jeff Ryan, a little pick six. Roberto Terrell will go in there. And Youngstown State, who broke the heart of the thundering herd on so many occasions, falls short. 38-24 Marshall headed to the Mobile Alabama Bowl, but before that, of course, they will be in the MAC Championship game. They will take on Toledo. You can see that on ESPN coming up on Friday night. And the Big 12, Kansas State trying to become bowl eligible against Missouri, who still had hopes of getting there. If they could win out, Josh Scoby, Scoby, Scoby. 14-yard run, 7-0 K-State, and here comes Scobie again. Yes, Scoby Doby do on the outside here. 37 yards down the sideline. Kansas State would miss the extra point, but they had an 18-0 lead. Scobie, 190 yards on the day, two touchdowns and 34 carries. And the Cats bowl eligible for the ninth straight year, 24-3. The final Missouri will...